And how about the first, second lemma? Well, we let f be an integrable function which lies inside the closed interval negative pi to pi. We state that for all epsilon greater than zero, there exists a step function s such that s is smaller than or equal to f and the integral from pi, a negative pi to pi of f minus s is smaller than epsilon. That means f and s are very close to each other. How can we prove so? We should apply the integration theory, which states that if f is an integrable function, then the integral of f can be approximated by Stubble's lower sum. That means for all epsilon greater than zero, there is a delta greater than zero such that the double lower sum is differed by the integral of f from negative pi to pi by less than epsilon. And here, p equal to the set of xj is a partition of the uh, interval negative pi to pi such that the norm of p is smaller than delta. And according to the definition of double's lower sum, mj should be equal to the infimum of f in the closed interval xj, xj plus 1. So, if we let sx equal to the sum from j equal to 0 to m minus 1, mj times chi, the closed interval xj, xj plus 1, indeed, the integral of s from negative pi to pi is equal to the bubble's lower sum in the previous page. And also, we see that s should be smaller than or equal to f because the mj taken here is the infimum of f over the interval xj and xj plus 1. Thus, we get that the for, the for all epsilon greater than 0, there is a step function such that the difference of the s and f and we integrate from negative pi to pi is indeed smaller than epsilon. And why can this absolute sign be removed because f minus s is greater than or equal to zero and therefore the, the absolute sign here can be removed and this is the end of the proof of the lemma 2 After introducing two lemmas we can now prove the riemann labak lemma well but lemma 1 for step function s we have that the absolute value of a n and absolute value of b n is more than or equal to c over n, and that means a n and b n will tend to infinity tends to zero as n tends to infinity by the sandwich theorem, and by the lemma two, that is a step function such that uh, the integral from negative pi to pi of f minus s is more than the, uh, epsilon for all epsilon greater than zero. Also, f can be greater than or equal to s. So how can we prove so? Let ambiguity, I, I will introduce some notation. Let a s n be coefficient of cosine n next of Fourier series of s, and a f n be the same thing of f. So a s n tends to 0 as n tends to infinity means that for all epsilon greater than 0 there exists n naught greater than 0 such that the absolute value of a s n is smaller than epsilon as a tends to uh, as a is great bigger than or equal to uh, n naught and therefore we also compute the, the difference of a s n and a f n and then we take the absolute value. Well, this is equal to 1 over pi times the absolute value of the integral from negative pi to pi s minus f cosine nx. And this is more than or equal to 1 over pi times the integral from negative pi to pi of the absolute value of s minus f 
times cosine nx. And since cosine nx is smaller than or equal to 1, and because s is smaller than or equal to f, this thing is smaller than or equal to 1 over pi times uh, the integral from negative pi to pi f minus s. And if we replace the epsilon by pi times epsilon in the previous slide, we see that it is smaller than epsilon. And last but not least, we will compute the absolute value of AFN. And by adding and subtracting ASN to AFN and apply the triangle inequality, we see that AFN should be smaller than or equal to the absolute value of AFN minus the ASN plus the absolute value of ASN. And why are we requesting n bigger than or equal to n naught? Because for n bigger than or equal to n naught, the second inequality of small than epsilon will be established. And therefore, we have that it is small than 2 epsilon. And therefore, by the definition of limit, this is small than 2 epsilon. And that means AFN should tend to 0 as n tends to infinity. And the similar proof can be applied for BFN. And therefore, we are done with the proof of the riemann labach theorem. Thank you for watching this video, and I will see you in the next video.